Hey, it's Chico. And if you want to be successful as an entrepreneur, as a real estate entrepreneur, you have to be willing to deal with a high degree of uncertainty and ambiguity in your business. And that uh, your level of, of being able to handle larger amounts of ambiguity and uncertainty are key to growth. And if you don't pay attention to that, you're going to stall and you're going to stall and you're going to stay stuck for a while and not realize really what the issue is. And that was the advice that I got from one of my mentors uh, a very long time ago. And, uh, and he told me this as a general, his general uh, thought process on being a successful entrepreneur. And, and uh, it definitely does apply to anyone who's wanting to be an entrepreneur, including you, because you're look, using real estate as a vehicle, but you're still going out there trying to start a business and trying to get things going. And today I'm doing the video from the clubhouse of my uh, community that I live in. I decided to come out here and uh, write in my journal. And as I wrote in my journal, I have these moleskin journals that I, this is a new one, that's why it's empty, but I use this as a thinking tool because a lot of times when you are thinking, uh, you're thinking your thoughts are just whizzing by so quickly and you don't really have time to really sit down and process and really think things through. So my coach yesterday gave me some exercises for me to do and I came here with the intention of, let me sit down, let me write down the exercises by hand and then later I can always write it on my keyboard to send to him. Uh, but I'm always a big fan of using a journal as a thinking and almost like a meditative tool to really slow your mind down and to think problems through and think through uh, challenges or uh, solutions that you might uh, be wanting to uh, get answers for in your business or in your personal life. I'm a big fan of the journal. By the way, at the end of the video, I, I got to walk over there and show you the pool. This thing is humongous. It's bigger than uh, the, <laughs> a lot of the resorts that I've stayed at. And I've stayed at a lot of different resorts and hotels and, you know, various price points. But this one here is humongous and there's hardly anybody here because every house in this community has a pool. So, you know, I guess they just, you just go to your own pool. Why go to the community pool and walk over here? But uh, one of these days I'm going to work out here at the gym and then I'm going to go ahead and just walk over here, uh, put my bathing suit out, go in the pool and uh, relax for a little bit in the morning before I get to work. And as always, you've got to subscribe to the channel. You've got to subscribe. Don't go to the buffet, eat all the food, and then leave without paying. It's a very bad thing. Plus, I really enjoy the comments. I love reading the comments. It juices me. It keeps me motivated to do more videos. And uh, I have back and forth with you guys here as well. I, I just enjoy it. So let's, you know, give me some comments. Give me some love. And uh, that way, I feel good about recording videos, even if you didn't give me some love. I would still record the videos because I do enjoy recording the videos and I have fun with it. But it would just make it better if you and I go back and forth a little bit and get to know each other. How about that? Fair enough? Okay. So let's talk about ambiguity and uncertainty. So what, are, what, are, what do each of these mean and how do they translate to you? So ambiguity, I look at as that uh, you don't know all the answers. And so a lot of you are looking to get 100% certainty on the answers to the questions you're asking. Um, when it comes to, say for example, uh, Facebook advertising, uh, everybody's looking for, I want the exact campaign that's gonna produce the exact same results as you are, Chico. Um, you, it may be in direct mail, you're looking for that perfect postcard, that perfect list, you're looking for a variety of different things that are, because you wanna know all the answers. And the challenge is with that is that if you're continually looking for the answers, you're never going to find them because you're never going to have a 100% certainty with, with the answers you're looking for. And it's just going to cause you into this endless loop of trying to seek out more and more information to be able to satisfy your desire uh, to, have, uh, to have all the answers. Uh, ambiguity also is uh, not sure if I'm doing the right thing. So, you know, you might have uh, data and information, but now you don't know, are you interpreting that data correctly? Are you interpreting the instructions that somebody gave you correctly? Are you implementing the information correctly? Um, and so ambiguity uh, in, in that regards is just there's, there's lack of clarity. So the way that shows up uh, for, uh, for a lot of real estate investors, and maybe it's showing up for you, is just that you feel that you've got to figure everything out before you get going. You're, and, and you listen to a ton of podcasts, you listen to a ton, a ton 
of, uh, of seminars, of webinars, you buy courses, you, and you're in this constant state of gathering information. And I see this because I've spoken with quite a few uh, of investors over the last couple of weeks that they have been on this journey for the last year and a half of gathering information and finally they feel that they're ready but the fact is that they were ready uh, a month into the whole thing but now they've wasted all this time energy and effort and perhaps lost market opportunity because the market is, uh, has a certain uh, uh, you know has a certain opportunity associated with each particular timeline in the marketplace and the longer you sit on the sidelines then the, the less you are able to take advantage of that opportunity now with the uncertainty uncertainty is hey will this work so, um, you know, uh, I spoke with a few investors uh, yesterday that were doing Facebook ads. And, you know, when they first got started with Facebook ads, they saw my uh, stuff on YouTube. Maybe you've done it too. And you're like, wow, does that really work? Or is this guy full of crap? And then they see the testimonials from the other students and they're like, wow, he has some case studies here. These guys seem to be like normal people that are implementing this and it seems to be working for them. Now the next layer is, hey, maybe it works for me. Um, and so you test that and then you get to the point where now you finally get to that point where it does work for you. So you have uh, cleared that obstacle, but now the, a new obstacle approaches with, hey, can I do this again? Can I do this frequently? Can I quit my job? Can I uh, do this in a way that it works this month, but not next month? And so that uncertainty uh, for a lot of people prevents them from moving forward. Um, uh, that shows up a lot when it comes to your budget for marketing and advertising campaigns. And, um, you know, when you first start off, I recommend, hey, start, with, start off with a budget of $25 if you're marketing for sellers, for motivated sellers on Facebook ads, because you want to make sure that you do everything right. So in the example, if we translate that to direct mail, you don't want to go out and say, if you've never done direct mail before, you've never done the setup for the CRM and the phone system and all that other stuff, you want to make sure you get it right. So you're not going to test that on a $10,000 budget, you know, for postcards, and then you get the phone number wrong. Or right? I've done that before, not 10,000, but I've done it before where, you know, I mailed out 2,000 postcards and I know what I'm doing and I, man, I, I messed up the phone number. I didn't double check. I didn't go through my process. So in direct mail, you wouldn't go out and send 10,000 postcards. If you never sent out a postcard in your life, you want to send out a couple thousand, a thousand, just to make sure that, okay, yeah, everything is working the way it should. That means that then that means that I can spend more money um, and then I can push the, on this thing a little bit more. The same thing with Facebook. Uh, people get started at a $25 budget and then now, um, now they get stuck on that. And, uh, you know, to me, I don't, uh, whenever I start campaigns, I start them off at $100, you know, a, a day. And I go for two days and I spend $200. And I'm okay with that because I'm thinking of the fact that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to buy results, but I'm also buying data. Because if something doesn't work, I don't see that as a failure. I see that as a, an adjustment that I need to make. And, uh, you know, uh, if you look at all the campaigns that I have inside of the Find Motivated Sellers Online uh, system, you know, for Facebook, I mean, though, every single campaign you see, for every one campaign you see, there was 10 of them that didn't work for me. The other day in the group, somebody uh, posted that they noticed my ads here in the local area that I was running. And I said, don't copy them because you don't know if they're working or not. They're not working. They're not in the course. That's why I'm testing them to see if they're working or not. But I'm buying data. And so you have to be willing and be okay with the fact that you may run some campaigns and you may get nothing out of it. And now you know that, hey, that didn't work. So let me see if I could retool that. And the testing is a matter of a variety of different testing. You can test the budget. You can test the, uh, you can test the, the, uh, the interest or without interest. You can test the ad copy. There's so many variables. But at the end of the day, you have to be okay with putting your money on the table, right? And uh, don't want to use the analogy of a casino, but you put your money on the table on the roulette wheel. And um, there's a chance that you may not get that money back. There's a chance that that casino will take your money and say, thank you very much. For, uh, for the money, uh, have a great day. And if you wanna come back tomorrow, then uh, you can put more money on the table and we'll be more than happy to take it from you. Um, Facebook is like that. If you give money, uh, Facebook, the one predictability about any, any platform is that if you give it money, you're guaranteed that they're going to take your money. They're in the business of taking your money to show ads to people. Now, whether or not your ads work or not, it doesn't matter. If you tell them I want $100, I'm going to give you $100 a day. They're going to do their best to spend the entire $100 over the course of the day because tomorrow they want you to come back and give them another 100 All right. They don't say, hey, um, I don't think we're going to get you the right prospects today. I don't think your ad is correct. But uh, so I'm not going to take your money. Go ahead and fix your thing and then come back to us. No, it doesn't work that way. So you have to be okay with that. You have to be willing to spend money and not getting anywhere. And, and, and that applies to everything. It applies to cold calling. You have to be able to, if you're doing cold calling, you're going to buy the data. 
you're gonna make a bunch of calls and you may not get anything out of it. Direct mail, the same thing is the uh, same thing. You buy a list, it may not be the list that you thought it was gonna be, and then in the end, you don't make any money from it. Um, and you know, at the at the bottom, the, at the end of the day, um, you have to look at me and anybody else that you follow as a guide. Okay, um, I I I I don't know all the answers. Now I am providing you a, a certain degree of certainty with the direction that you're going because I have experience and I know that certain things will work over other things. But at the end of the day, when you release things in, out into the world, whether it be a postcard or a Facebook ad, you know, you have to be okay with the fact that, that, that it's not 100% guaranteed. And that you know, at the end of the day, at the worst case scenario, if you end up spending a thousand bucks and you don't get anything out of it, it's not a lost cause. And that's a hard pill for a lot of people to swallow. It is not a lost cause because if hypothetically, and again, we're not in the business of wasting money, but if you spent a thousand bucks and you did all the ads incorrectly when it comes to Facebook, you got very little lead flow. And at the end of that month, you end up not getting a deal and you spent a grand. You might say, well, that's a failure, Chico. I say, well, no, it's not a failure because at the end of that month, you have figured out what you did wrong. You figured out that you made a bunch of mistakes. You figured out how exactly you need to advertise it, how to advertise on Facebook correctly, appropriately. And then now that sets you up for the next month because I didn't get to where I am with the Facebook by doing everything right. I spent a lot of money and I still spend a lot of money every month on stuff that doesn't work. But I'm always pushing the envelope to figure out, hey, what's that next version of what I'm doing that's going to work and do better? And that's the only reason I've been able to you know, even have success with postcard marketing because I created a bunch of postcards where I didn't know that were going to work. I mean, I've tested a bunch of postcards that never worked, but then I got to eventually to the few that did work and those were the ones that made millions of dollars for myself and other, other students. And that's how you have to think about it. So at the bottom, you know, bottom line is, is that you have to be okay with dealing with ambiguity and uncertainty. You don't know the answers, and this applies across the board for everything. You know, you don't know if um, are you making the right offer on the property. Maybe, maybe you're not. But at some point, you got to take a chance and say, you know what? I think it's the right number. I'm going to have to say okay to the seller. I'm going to have to put this on the contract. I'm going to have to sell it and try to push it to investors, knowing that I may get some pushback, and they might say, well, gee, you bought it for too high, and I'm going to go back to the seller and say, well, you know, I, I, I can't do this deal because it's too much money. You know, I need a price reduction. And you have to be okay with that. And so that's part of the process. Nobody that's successful got to where they are by getting everything right. And the more you understand that, and I say that to you because I am a very analytical person. I want to make sure that everything is 100% correct, that is everything exactly the way I want it to be. And uh, you know, the example would be uh, making videos for you guys here on YouTube. Um, I went through like four YouTube courses. It was okay. The first one was good enough. But I did it, I, I went more, more materials than I could have, than I needed to. And at the end, it, made, it didn't make that much difference because the learning that I have here about YouTube happens now on the field. It happens with me doing experiments and seeing what works and what doesn't work. Now, with YouTube, I'm not spending, time, I'm not spending money, but I am spending time. So there is always a loss of something, time or money. And so that's what I want to encourage you today is to be okay with that, uncertainty, be, uh, with that uncertainty, be okay with that ambiguity, being okay with doing, being wrong, being okay with losing money. And you're not gonna do it haphazardly, you get my help, and so I'm gonna make sure that you don't uh, uh, go crazy and lose a bunch of money. I'm gonna keep the guardrails on to make sure that, hey, you are doing things appropriately. You know, I, I look at it as, uh, I am the, you know, when you're going down the highway, I'm those barriers on the highway that make sure that your car doesn't go off the cliff and like crashes onto the, 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 the road below and then you die. Okay, that, that's what my goal is. I'm trying to keep you from dying, all right? I'm trying to keep your marketing dollars from dying. I'm trying to keep your, your hopes and dreams of making this business work from dying. That's my goal. I don't have all the answers and you can't have all the answers, but together with my help, I can guide you and I can move you in the right direction. And as long as you persist and as long as we go back and forth, you know, whether it be here, whether it be my groups, et cetera, you'll make it, but you gotta be okay with that. Let me show you the pool before I let you go. So this is the, um, the pool for my clubhouse for where I live right now. And uh, it is fairly large. I mean, I don't know how big this pool is, but 
it is gigantic and uh, every time I've been here there's nobody here um, they do heat the pool during the winter so I think it'll be very nice during the winter to be here uh, my pool is heated too at the house but look at this thing this is humongous um, and uh, they got ping pong tables table tennis they got a huge clubhouse with a bunch of stuff they got the jacuzzi here but I got a, a jacuzzi I was using the jacuzzi at my house last night I got a jacuzzi as well but this one's a wow this is a, a pretty big jacuzzi uh, and just overall nice very very nice uh, the great thing about being here is that um, you you feel like you are living in a uh, you feel like you're on vacation because it really is uh, a resort um, and uh, I gotta give you maybe another tour of, uh, of the rest of this place but so far um, I'm definitely enjoying it the family's enjoying it sorry about the shaky footage I forgot to turn the video stabilization on when I turn on video stabilization on then it crops the image so you don't see as much of the widescreen as you normally would because it's doing video stabilization but somebody the other day the other day asked me uh, Chico what you know what what about uh, the money making money um, inspires you or juices you and for me uh, right now I spend it on two things uh, housing and vacations with the family uh, I'm not a car guy right now so um, I, I'm not going to show you fancy cars because I don't have any fancy cars uh, there's nothing wrong with that when I first started making money as a real estate investor the first thing I did was buy uh, a very expensive car I was paying like 18 I always tell the story I was paying $1,800 a month for uh, this car and um, I didn't drive it anywhere I just basically went to um, I went to uh, Starbucks and I went to uh, FedEx and that was it that was the extent of my driving so I sat on my driver for most of the time and even right now I don't drive that much because I work from home and then whenever I drive I drive my Suburban because I'm definitely afraid of the people that drive here in South Florida and I'm like you know I want 6,000 pounds of steel between me and my family so that if I get into a car accident I have a better chance of winning and even when I go out on the town with my wife and we go out to dinner I take the big Suburban the valets don't like it but I like it because if I got some crazy driver driving at night who's not paying attention I don't want them crashing into me and then what something happens to me and my wife and then now what are the, what about the kids maybe it's just me being paranoid but uh, although somebody told me the other day well Chico if you bought a Rolls Royce that's like 6,000 pounds so it's right around the equivalent of what a Suburban would be and maybe maybe but uh, outside of that uh, we I have a second car and I drive that thing like 100 miles a month hardly anything so for right now it's not a priority maybe next year I don't know uh, I would though however if I were to buy an expensive car I would buy one uh, there's a guy that I follow his name is Pejman Gadini he owns a website called exotic car hacks and he teaches you how to go out and buy exotic cars so his differentiation or what he suggest you do is is that let's say that I wanted a Rolls Royce so instead of buying instead of going out and leasing a Rolls Royce he says you know what go out and buy a Rolls Royce say uh, say a Rolls Royce is four hundred thousand dollars right brand new you lease it you're gonna pay a bunch of money on the lease and then after that you're gonna turn it in and you can't put that many miles on that car so what he says is look you can go out and buy a used uh, a used Rolls Royce and uh, you know five years old or whatever and now the depreciation is completely you know you've that that the car has taken a hit already under the depreciation and then you um you're going to spend say a hundred a buck 20 for that car which is equivalent of you if you bought a brand new mercedes s-class right and you dialed it in i mean those things are now 120 right um so it's the equivalent of you buying a mercedes but now you own the Ro rolls royce right you own it and you can make some modifications to really spruce it up maybe put some rims and tires and then now you are um, you're going to drive that car and uh, you know you're not going to put some crazy ass miles on it but you're going to put more miles than you would with a lease and then a year a year and a half later you decide I'm going to sell it you're going to be able to sell it for approximately the same amount of money maybe a little bit less than what you paid because you are going to keep it in good shape and then in the end your net cost of ownership on a per month basis is going to be significantly less than the cost of ownership that you would have with a um, with a lease now the 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 difference in that is that obviously with a lease you can get away with maybe putting in less money than you would with a with a, with a finance car um, but you know hundred and twenty thousand dollar car maybe if you put 30 or 40k down on the deal you know obviously you got to do that because you're not going to miss the 30 or 40k and you drive a nice car so what am I saying 
if you see me in the future with a fancy car, know that I'm too cheap to buy it new. I'm not going to lease it. I'm going to get myself a good deal. I'm going to go and follow my, uh, uh, this guy Pejman's advice. I'm going to get myself a nice used one. I'm going to put some rims on it. And it's still going to look nice, but at a significantly less, less cost. Why? Because you want to buy cars like you want to buy houses. Cheap. <laughs> and at a discount. Enough of that. So I appreciate you and uh, look forward to uh, our next video.